Brexton Ultimate Plus, memory seats. It's the little things like that that matter on this car. Let me show you a little bit more. Hey guys, Tom from Clarion here. So ever since, well, I think it was probably March 21 when Sanyong introduced the new Rexton with that big grill, looked fantastic. There were these pictures of the Korean edition with massive wheels and folding out side steps and this quilted interior is beautiful. We were inundated with customers saying, oh, I can't wait until then. that one's available. How much is it gonna be? And very sadly, we, we didn't actually launch it in the UK. That is, until now, I present to you the Rexton Ultimate Plus. Let's find out all about it. So what's it all about, the Rexton Ultimate Plus? Well, it's actually very, very similar to the Korean Black Edition, like I just mentioned in the intro, but there are a few subtle differences for the UK market. So instead of having the uh, fold-out side steps that was on the um, Korean version, we do have um, solid mounted aluminium units um, which are a lot more sturdy I'm told by my Korean pals and instead of having the uh, black uh, alloy wheels as a standard feature you do have these bright chrome alloys they're 20 inch and they're an incredibly attractive proposition on the model and they really give it I think especially from a bit of a distance if we just come back here it really gives it that road presence, which I think the Rexton has always deserved, especially with that, that front grille, of course, which uh, they added back in March. Let's have a look around the back. So, around the back of the car, not a great deal has changed in actual fact, but I don't think that's a bad thing, because with the addition of the wheels now and the side steps as standard, it really gives it that road presence, which I think it deserved. And of course, it picks up the, the lower uh, bumper garnish in chrome, picks up really nicely with the uh, the wheels as well and I think really adds to the look of the car along with the other chrome uh, advantages as well now you might be looking at the uh, rear windows thinking oh actually they're quite a lot darker are they darker tinted they aren't actually what they've got is a, um, a rear blind which uh, I was going to show you in the interior video but they're actually interior blinds for the rear passengers so if you do have children these retractable blinds which are easily rolled back into the uh, the door pockets there. I think that comes across. Sorry, let me get that right. That rolls just down into the door there and folds away, but gives you rear passengers that extra bit of uh, protection from UV. So yeah, really good feature. But the exciting things start to happen when we we get inside. So um, with these fancy new keys that you get, which are a very very nice addition, if we unlock the car, you'll start to see exactly what I mean. So hopping in. Uh oh, you see that seat moving? Yeah, we have the return, thankfully, of memory seats. So we've got memory seats now. So if you do have um, lots of different drivers in the car, you know, it makes things a lot easier having to uh, not go and find your seat position every time. So that's a really, really uh, high quality upgrade in my opinion. And just look at these seats. Now these really deserve um, some extra uh, fine detail because it does make it feel like a, a very special place to be indeed. Now you've got this really nice kind of um, checkered piping along the seats and of course you've got this really really high quality quilting which you can see across the base as well and onto the backrest and then you've got a really really elegant piece of suede just on the back and this isn't just on the seats so you've got it on the rears as well which, forgive me, I've got my trade plate on the back there, but you can see, again, you've got the suede there, and you've got the leather here with the quilting, really pretty, but you've also got it on the door cards, so these door cards just give a really extra tactile feel, the suede there, it just gives it that, that kind of quality feel, which, of course, if you are buying a Rexton Ultimate, you know, you're, you're buying it for the, the luxury and, um, you know, it, it makes a big difference in my opinion. And of course that is on the front as well. Moving further in, hopefully my camera's gonna not go mad if I point it up. You've got your sunroof. At long last, it's back. So we have a Rexton with a electric tilt and slide sunroof. 
which the controls are just up there, as you can see. And lots and lots of people have been asking for this and it's great to see it return. Um, so a really, really good feature that. And what's this? Paddle shifters. So when Sanyong changed the, the spec in 2021, when they put the 205 PS engine in there, they also added a new gearbox. So this is the new eight speed unit, which if I just can point you down that direction, you see you've got a completely new shifter there and new center console, which whilst we're down there as well, by the way, if I just point you down there, you've got your wireless charging port, which is down there and a couple of USB ports. But that eight speed gearbox makes all the difference, which I'll tell you all about when we're on the road. But yes, you have got paddle shift now as well, which is great news. Now, perhaps this is old news, but I certainly haven't um, made a video about this yet. But again, that suede is carried on to the dashboard. Really nice tactile feel all the way underneath the um, uh, air conditioning controls, the climate control around the start button. And of course, you've now got this fantastic digital dash. Um, so you've got the full digi dash as per Rexton, uh, sorry, Rexton as per Musso, uh, which gives you lots of nice information there um, and lots of different configurations. You can have your navigation in there as well as on your 9.2 inch screen, which is fantastic. Um, you've got new software completely uh, updated on the head unit as well, which is a lot snappier, a lot faster, which is quite nice. Turn off the music there, but yeah really really nice upgrades there as well again it just kind of builds to the feel of the car being very luxurious which of course is exactly what you would want right then gang so let's switch on that new 205 horsepower unit incredibly quiet coupled with more sound deadening more insulation more everything to make the car even smoother so let's see how it drives. Um, now, to put you in the picture, uh, again, when Sanyong first launched the fourth generation model, they had a 20-inch um, wheel set up, but they had a very, very stiff rear beam. So it meant that you did get a little bit of scuttle shake and it wasn't quite as smooth. And a lot of the reviews, the early ones, that dog the uh, um, Rexton saying, oh, it's quite rough on the back, it's quite hard. Um, I wanna find out just how different this is because um, in 2019, Sanyong changed the rear trailing arm to be set up for UK roads, and it's not widely known that that was the case, and it made the ride quality fantastic. It was near Range Rover air you know, suspension quality, so I just want to feel what the 20-inch wheels um, feel like now on that particular setup and feel uh, the difference it makes. So let's get cracking and have a go and, and see what it feels like. So right off the bat to test the ride quality, uh, we are negotiating a single track lane, just back from the, where I was filming just a second ago. Um, and you are attached right now to a camera which is not stabilized at all. Um, so although we're going over some pretty horrific uh, bumps and lumps in the road, uh, probably one of the worst in this area actually, um, you are all in incredibly stable position right now. So. Um, a testament to the ride quality. So now that we get onto a slightly faster bit of road, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset the um, MPG meter on the car um, because although this engine is more powerful, uh, the new AdBlue model is actually more efficient as well. So you should see a better fuel efficiency compared to the old model. So let's press the button, hear the beep, and I'll drive back to base and I'll tell you exactly what it's like uh, from an MPG perspective. So right off the bat, having this eight speed gearbox makes a big difference to the way that the car drives. Um, it's a lot more relaxed. And of course that 205 horsepower unit as well makes a big difference as well, because yes, you've got more torque and you've got more power, but because you are um, using one gear up as it were, um, the engine's not revving as much. So it's a lot quieter, it's a lot more um, tractable. Um, and it's just a nicer place to be, which of course is, is the aim on this vehicle. It is to give a luxurious ride quality, which it absolutely does. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna head onto the dual carriageway. We're gonna keep our MPG meter reading here and just see exactly what kind of fuel efficiency we get down the dual carriageway. Now, it's almost certainly psychosomatic, but 
the seats feel lovely. <laughs> and I've hurt my back recently, so having the seat heater on and stuff like that, it's, it's lovely, gorgeous. Um, but yeah, we're just cruising back at the moment. We're on the dual carriageway. We're doing just around 65 miles an hour and it is dead quiet. I mean, we're doing 1500 RPM, all thanks to that new eight speed gearbox um, and that new engine. So, you know, stunning, stunning results. And I'm just gonna adjust my camera angle a little bit here so you don't lose me, hopefully. It just makes it a comfortable ride. It's, it's, it's efficient, it's comfortable. It's exactly what you want from an SUV of this size. Now, naturally, I'm driving this car as gently as possible uh, to get the best possible fuel efficiency. Um, but I've been following the speed limit everywhere. Um, and you know what? We're at 41 miles to the gallon. Absolutely incredible result, considering the size of the vehicle. Don't forget, it can tow three and a half tonnes. It's the size of a Range Rover autobiography or an auto uh, or a sport or, or something similar. Um, massive car. Um, so to get that kind of fuel efficiency out of something this size is remarkable. So yeah, and that's, this is on a mixed journey, probably done a mixed journey of about seven or eight miles. Um, so, you know, you would expect it to be quite a lot lower um, than that. Um, but yeah, a really good result thus far. So there you are, fuel efficiency fans. Just sitting in a whole load of traffic jams on the way back there. We managed to get pretty much 40 miles to the gallon. It's obviously just dropping because I've been idling here for a little while, but 40 to the gallon. Phenomenal. Yep, so back in the showroom now with the, the Ultimate Plus. Now, this is a common feature with all Rexton. They're all seven seat models, but I just thought I'd show you um, the boot space. As I say, I've not covered it for a while. Obviously, Ultimate and Ultimate Plus have got the electronic uh, opening boot. So I can hold down the button there. There is a program as well, which if you actually stand behind the car, uh, it will go and open itself. Now, if I can just adjust my camera there to give you a bit of exposure in the back. Now, they're all seven seat models now. So every single Rexton is a seven seat model. And you'll notice that you've got this kind of split design, which um, you'll see here, you've got this shelf, which allows you to go and have complete flat loading as you go into the back of the car. And that means that if you've got the seats folded down, you will have um, a massive space, which I'll show you in just a second. But the seven seats, dead easy to go and get up. You just go and pull the tag here, and then you've got a decent amount of space. And if I can just turn my camera to show you, in front, this is usually the problem in this type of vehicle, you actually don't have a great deal of space in front for your legs, but on the Rexton, you, you really do have a decent amount of room. So I'm just going to pop the seats down flat and just show you what they look like down there as well. I just thought I'd show you, whilst we're converting the seats, um, one of the common problems with these SUV seven-seaters is you often have a very, very difficult entry point for the third row, but I just wanted to demo how this works. So if I just show you really quickly, if you don't lose uh, the frame of my camera, you can actually see that this big heavy rear seat is supported by hydraulic lifters. And that's really useful because it obviously brings the um, seat up really, really high and really easily. And it gives you a really decent amount of space to get in from the side step into the, the car. Uh, and it makes the entry point into that uh, third row really, really quite, uh, quite good. And again, if I just pan down a little bit, I can show you, look how much space you've got. So comparing this to Kia and Hyundai and some of our other competitors here, even Range Rover actually, you've got a lot more space for that third row passenger. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the quilted um, seats on the uh, third row, but I can't really blame Sanyong for that, to be honest, because, I mean, let's face it, you know, even though this is a very, very high and luxury model, they've spent the money where it matters. You know, these are occasional seats. So, you know, not having that quilting on there, it just keeps the price even more competitive. But yeah, let's just show you folded down now. So guys, here is the seats all folded down completely flat. So, I mean, look at this. If you're contemplating any kind of large, I don't know, you're like an Ikea trip or something. Look at the amount of space you get in there. I mean, this is the ideal vehicle for doing just that. Absolutely stunning. So yeah, so I keep uh, having to get the uh, focus right there and the exposure. But yeah, masses and masses of room, really, really useful space. And last thing I'll show you is 
when we've got the seats in the upright position, so when you've got the seven seats, exactly how much boot space you get, because again, this is often quite a, a common problem with um, SUVs of this type. So let me get it all folded back up again and I'll show you that. All right guys, so here is the boot with all of the seats folded in the upright position. So this is giving the least amount of boot space. And as you can imagine, um, it, it's not a, a vast amount of space, but at the bottom here, if I can just point, you've probably got about 45 centimetres of space from the backrest to um, the seat. And you've, you've got an acceptable amount. You could probably get about, I don't know, three or four soft bags in there, maybe a small case. Um, but very comparable with other models in the class, if not a little larger. But yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a usable space when those seats are upright. Just while we're in the back here, guys, one of my very good customers has just uh, come in and noticed an extra feature that is on the Ultimate Plus that you don't get on the uh, Ultimate, and that's rear air conditioning. So you've got a big air intake here, and then you've got two vents on the side here, which you can obviously go and control. So not only for your seven seat passengers, but if you've got any um, you know, furry friends, dogs, etc., that want to go and stay cool or, or perhaps produce, uh, you can go and pop it straight in the back and then you get lovely chilled aircon, which is pumped through and uh, again, spun by this uh, um, air intake here, right into the back. So everyone stays really, really nice and cool. There we go, guys. So that was Rexton Plus. We're gonna sit down now, take it to the desk and look at deals and various other data and fill you in with all the interesting bits. Let's go over there now. Right, here we are chaps, my favorite bit at the desk, talking about pricing and everything else, all the data, that kind of stuff. So just how much is the Rexon Ultimate Plus? Well, it's 45,000 pounds. There, I said it, it's 45,000 pounds, but compared to the competitors in the market and everything else you can get, which does the same thing, it is so cheap and I'll show you. So. Let's just hop straight over to having a very quick look at Kia. Now, the Sorento, which is a very, very similar vehicle in many ways, um, very similar size, got very similar specification, um, but there are some key things that are different. So with the Kia, it only tows 2,500 um, brake weight, so a full thousand less, so nowhere near as uh, strong in the engine department. And Oddly, no fuel efficiency figures. I thought this car had been out for some time now, but there's still TBC. Don't know what's going on with that with Kia, but the important bit, pricing. So if we click over to pricing, for the same model with this, they call it an addition, it's, it's four and a half thousand pounds more. Four and a half thousand pounds, that is an awful lot of money. And don't forget, they've only got a seven year, 100,000 mark warranty, whereas Sanyong has got the seven year, 150,000 mark warranty. So a third better in the warranty stakes as well on that mileage part. So four and a half grand is an awful lot of money to spend for a truck with a worse towing capacity and less warranty. It's a no brainer. So moving swiftly on, um, you might think actually um, that Land Rover wouldn't be in the middle here. It wouldn't be, it would be right at the very top of the most expensive cars, but here it is. So if you want a similar car from Land Rover, um, the Discovery is the model to go with. <clears throat> and in their most basic trim, which is still relatively good spec in actual fact, uh, you're spending a cool £12,226 more to get a Land Rover Discovery. So... Um, looking at the specification, this is a Discovery S and it is an AWD automatic MHEV. Now, MHEV, mild hybrid electric vehicle, brilliant. Let's check out the fuel efficiency. Maybe that's where it's winning and that extra £12,000. Let's have a quick uh, squeeze, shall we? Coming down to WLTP fuel economy, hmm, 33.8. Seems like that mild hybrid may be not doing quite as much as uh, you might think in actual fact for the extra £12,000. And of course, only a three year, a measly three year warranty, which um, I think we all know if any of the uh, current car surveys and uh, data is to be believed, you'll probably be using an awful lot as they're still not particularly reliable. So yeah, I think we can say eh, eh, to Land Rover compared to a Rexton. 
Right, so next on the list, we've got Toyota. So uh, Toyota Land Cruiser, very well-known, big truck as well. Um, does have the correct tones, it will tow 3,500, um, but it is an eye-watering uh, 62,710 pounds. Uh, I'm not going to calculate how much more that is. It's a lot. A lot more um, and also warranty as well now this is um, quite an interesting thing with um, uh, Toyota they're currently advertising that they have 10 years warranty they don't have 10 years warranty what they have given you is from manufacturer they're giving you a three-year warranty up to 60,000 miles and then if you go back to Toyota to have a service they give you a free extra year's warranty up to 10 years. Okay, so it's a little bit misleading, um, but yeah, it's a three-year warranty. So you're paying £62,000, so, you know, an absolute shed load of money more than the Rexton. And fuel efficiency, you might think it's winning at 29 miles to the gallon. So a full 10 miles to the gallon less than what we've just got from the Rexton on the way back. So a winner on all fronts. Let's get it back up what a stunning vehicle so let's talk about a few more bits and pieces and deals as well so even more exciting what are the deals on this car so just like the rest of the Sanyong range we have lots of schemes affiliate groups and um, uh, memberships to various clubs and uh, organizations that will get you discounts so for example if you are an nhs worker if you are a um, nfu mutual uh, or nfu scotland member if you are a basque member if you are um, part of a construction group or what have you the list is virtually endless um, and the, the discount levels are varying but they're all based on percentages and because this is one of the most expensive cars that we do it means that the amount of discount that you can actually save on this car is even greater than any of the other models available so it is well worth sending us either a WhatsApp, uh, give us a phone call or send us an email as shown on the screen here and we can help give you a fantastic deal. OK, um, furthermore, I mean, don't worry if you aren't local to us, uh, we do offer free delivery all over the country as well. Um, there are charges um, for certain distances, so do give us a ring and we let you know. But the delivery that we offer is all over the country and we supply cars all over the place. We are the Sanyong experts and we would love to have an opportunity to supply you a Rexton Ultimate Plus or a Rexton or a Musso, Tivoli, Crando, whatever you need. If it's Sanyong, we are the ones to do just that for you and do it in an efficient, polite and a manner that you would want to come back to us because at the end of the day that's what we want from you so um please do leave a, a message under on youtube um ask any questions you have and hopefully we'll speak to you soon and uh, be supplying you at, at rexton thanks very much for watching